My name is Alexandra. I'm a software developer, I'm a consultant, and for the past three years, I've been working remotely. Um, this talk is remote work and productivity, how one influences the other. And um, before we, we get started, I want to ask um, some questions of you. And let's just get started. Who here, raise your hand, has worked remotely? Okay, who is interested in working remotely? Okay, yeah, good. And now, the most important question. Do you think remote work is more productive than office work? Okay, no, not as many. And I will ask you this question again at the end to see if um, I, I have changed somebody's mind for better or maybe for worse, let's see. Okay, let's start with productivity. What is productivity? Well, if you Google it, you would get an answer like an economic measure that um, looks at the input and measures how much uh, useful out output you have made of that input. So it's also a measure of the efficiency of a person, um, of a system, um, of a machine maybe, in converting uh, input to useful output. So I assume we, we have many developers in the room. Would anyone like to, uh, to guess what would be a developer's output? Of course, code. So usually if we, if we maximize the output from the given input, we can say that we are productive. But do you think if a de developer writes more and more code, is he more and more productive? Let's, let's do a show of hands. If you write a lot of code, are you productive? Nobody thinks so. If I write thousands and thousands of lines of code, am I productive? Oh, maybe. Okay, yeah, that, that's an answer. So usually um, we're, we're thinking of productivity in terms of that would be nice to have. I would like to be productive. But if we look at the history of productivity and being productive, it started um, a long, long time ago and it had a completely different definition than it does now. So, uh, for example, a hundred years ago, uh, if you were working in, in a factory, you would have to work more or less eight hours in a day, and that would mean that you are productive for more or less eight hours in a day. If you are building something with your hands, you could just tune out and think of a anything else, and you would still be um, able to, to produce a lot of things at the end of the day. But I think developers are are different in this sense. If you work, if you're at the office eight hours a day, you're not likely to be productive for eight hours a day. You won't be coding for eight hours a day straight. You, if you increase this time, if you want to, to work for 10 hours a day, for 14 hours a day, chances are that you might be less productive than working eight hours a day. So, in answering the question, is more better? I'm not sure what to tell you. Um, so I told you the definition that, that we have like a hundred years ago. And now I, um, I want to ask the question, where, where, did, where did it go wrong? What did we get wrong about being productive? And what can we change? Well, first of all, in my opinion, uh, the problem is, is that we're me measuring um, and managing time rather than being productive. This is how you get in, in all kinds of situations, like, for example, if you're working in, in an office, you're always try, trying to game the system, you're always trying to, to appear busy. And what does management do? Management says, um, well, you can go home when you finish this task, but immediately when you finish that task, there's a full backlog and you will receive more from that backlog. So they're not interested in, um, 
you doing as much as it can be reasonably expected or what was determined ahead of time, they're more interested in you working eight, eight hours a day straight. So they're interested in managing time rather than productivity. And the, pro the problem with this is that a programmer's work cannot be quantified. It's, it's very hard to, to determine what are the deliverables in, um, in someone's work, especially a programmer. So what can we do about it? We can start by making small changes in the concept of work. Do we hold people accountable for the, the lines of code that they wrote or for the business value that they, they produced? Did they make something valuable with um, a short amount of code or did they make something not so, um, not so useful but they wrote many and many lines of code? We can start thinking about how to quantify these things. Um, how, how, do we, how do we interpret and quantify the, the results of a developer? We can also um, change our concept of evaluation. Do we hold accountable that, um, the people that come into the office and we, we, we look at them, we have to know that they are, they are there so that we know they're being productive, or do we ha hold them responsible for their output, for, for the value they bring to business? And, and finally, I think we should um, make changes in how we reward work. Finishing faster a task should uh, reward me with some time off, not more tasks from the backlog. So productivity means different things to different people. And I think everyone should be able to, to make their own productivity definition. For example, my own is knowing what my goal, goals are and achieving them without spending too much mental effort. So I think it's time, and if you want to, uh, to share some of your definitions, if you didn't have one or you, you made uh, one just now, if you would like to, to share them, anyone? No one? Oh yeah, in the back, someone. I think we have a microphone. Oh yeah, just, just shout. Okay, sustainable delivery of business value. Right? That's a great definition. Anyone else? You want? Problem solved. Yeah, that, that's even shorter, even better. Yeah. Can you? Quality rather than code. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those are, those are great definitions. So why, why should we update our definitions now? In my opinion, there has been, and, and also it's, it's data backed, but we will talk about that later. We have had a steady, steady rise in remote workers and a class of workers that, that we call knowledge workers. Um, this includes um, IT people, programmers, um, marketers, writers, uh, the kind of people that don't have to be present to do their job and they, they could benefit from having time off and going alone and thinking about solutions and coming up with them. They value uh, flexibility in, time of, uh, in uh, terms of both time and location that they work in, and uh, they're, they're usually called remote workers. So in, um, in the past few years, we've had um, a steady rise and um, I've, I've compiled some, some white papers. You can check them all um, in, in the top corner if, if anyone's interested, but I, I will summarize them for you. So a Gallup poll found that 30% of American workers have worked at least once remotely in their careers. This share of workers has increased slowly in 2003 from 19% to 24% in 2015. Yet another survey stated that telecommuting has risen 79% from 2005 to 2012. And now 
two million workers in America work remotely. The average time has also increased. So if you work remotely, you are likely to work 40 minutes more now. Um, before I tell you my experience as a remote worker, I would like to also share some data, and uh, you can verify them all by following the links in the, in the top corner if someone is interested after the talk. So, um, a famous study at Stanford the, um, University called the Work From Home Experiment happened, and at the end of the study, this is what they concluded. Homeworking led to a 13% increase in performance. People that were working for home uh, had improved work satisfaction, they experienced less turnover, and at the end of the study, half of them switched to working remotely completely. And this, um, this followed with um, a performance gain almost doubling from the first figure. Next, the European Foundation for Improvement of Living and Working Conditions, that, that's a mouthful, in partnership with British Telecom, ran um, uh, a work from home experiment as well. What they did is have um, call center agents uh, work, work from home, and during the course of the day, uh, this, uh, these agents were uh, likely to um, engage in, in more, um, more phone calls with their clients, and they, they worked for an extra hour a day almost, rather than their um, office counterparts. The estimated productivity from all their departments um, was from 15 to a 30% increase. Um, so um, I, I have three... Um, Three more slides here. I want to, to tell you what um, a remote worker thinks. I want to tell you what their manager thinks and what the employers think. So, if you are a remote worker, here is what happens. Um, some, there is another study that summarized over 1,400 interviews, workshops, forums, and so on. 75% of the people who answered said that um, they, uh, they are able to concentrate better and they are able to, um, to have more performance in their work. Another study from the U.S. General Services Administration reported an increase of productivity of almost one hour per day among the uh, remote workers. Also, Best Buy uh, did a similar experiment and the, their results were, were, were a 35% increase in productivity managers. So you, usually the managers are, um, are the ones um, kind of opposing remote work, but, but here, here's what the, the data says. A study in more than 24,000 workers, 80% of IBM managers said that they agreed that productivity is increased in a flexible environment. Another study of um, 200 senior and middle managers about their work environment said the same. 50% said that um, th they found it hard to be creative in the office, and 36% they said that they were more productive at home rather than in the office. I think this is the last slide with, with data. So another survey, survey of 1,000 companies, um, they asked their board of directors what they thought about remo remote work and this is what they said. 50% of them said that uh, productivity increases with remote work, and 75% of them said uh, they were the same or they felt neutral about it. The last study from the Industrial uh, Relations Services employed another 66 employers, and this is what they found. 38 felt, felt very pos um, positive about remote working, 40 neutral, um, and none of them reported a negative impact. So, also, um, remote work has some unexpected benefits, and, and uh, these have surprised me a lot. 
For example, um, during a snow of four days in Washington, D.C., um, the employees were asked to, to work from home, and the government of the United States saved an estimated $32 million just by having remote workers. Also, if you care about going green, it is estimated that uh, 2.9 U.S. telecommuters have saved 30, um, 390 million gallons of gas, and they prevented the release of 3.6 million, million tons of greenhouse gases yearly. So it's no wonder that the World Economic um, Forum says that flexible work is really a driver of workplace transformation. So now that uh, I've told you all the data, and um, I want to, to go a bit in my, in my personal experience in, um, in remote working and how uh, remote work and productivity are connected for me. First of all, if you work remotely, you have more time. Um, in, in big cities like mine, you, you would have a commute that would last almost an hour, so um, you would double that um, for, uh, with the way back home, and you would get two hours. So now, for two hours a day, I get to learn a new skill, I get to, um, to spend time with my family, and, and so on. Also, the, the cost of refocusing on the task at hand has gone down for me. For example, in, in an office, I, I'm sure you all have this, you have that one loud colleague or that other colleague that always schedules meetings and you, you get stuck into a meeting for, for a very long time. I, I see a, a, a few laughing, so I, I know I'm saying something that, will, that resonates with, with everyone, right? And uh, also, I, I absolutely hate open spaces. I find them uh, terrible for, for productivity and for, and for concentrating. And yeah, I think remote work solves a lot of, a lot of those, those problems. So this is my experience in terms of productivity. But I also want to, want to tell you about the drawbacks because it's not uh, just, just rainbows in, in remote work, all right? So um, the first one is uh, self-discipline. You need to, to have a lot of self-discipline. To You need to uh, be able to maintain your own schedule. You need to be uh, proactive. So my recommendation for this is to um, have a high ownership of your work. If you are interested in the project that you are doing, um, you are more likely to, to be focused and um, proactive and in finding solutions. The second uh, thing, the second drawback I want to tell you about is, um, and, and this is something that you cannot change, it's your personality type. So um, are you the type of person that uh, draws your energy from uh, being with people? Um, are you easily distracted? Um, can, you, can you work without guidance? Because th these are things that you, um, you have to, to know about and uh, for yourself to if you get into remote working. And the third, third drawback I want to tell you about is loneliness. But this is something that is uh, usually very, very well managed and um, it can be easily fixed. So my solution is having a support structure. So uh, go, to, go to meetups, go to conferences, uh, go to Slack channels for other remote workers. Um, also, do, do pair programming. If you work in, into a remote team, um, pair programming is, is an excellent way of getting to know your team, uh, not feeling very lonely, and getting on, on the same page with your, with your colleagues. All right. Um, I want to, to leave you with um, three tips for anyone interested in um, being more productive first and then working um, remotely. So um, before getting into the three tips, I, I have a pre prerequisite, and it's, it's the popular joke that everyone makes about uh, remote workers, so get into your pajamas and start coding. Um, so my prerequisite is this, be comfortable. And if this means um, coding in your pajamas, then okay, just do that, but um, what is underneath this is you have to be comfortable. You don't want to, um, you don't want to, um, to be like, 
um, I have to code now for an hour, then I have to go uh, drop off the kids somewhere, then I have to go to the grocery store, and I have to get to, to back, back to coding for two more hours. So um, get comfortable. Um, uh, make sure that you can, uh, you can focus on your work. Handling, handling distractions. So you've got comfortable, but not too comfortable that you are now distracted. So how to handle distractions? Um, first, you could identify what are the common distractions for you. What do you know that uh, when you start doing, you won't be getting back to work? Find them and remove them. A lot of people uh, recommend to, to having home offices, but um, I don't think that's possible for, for everyone. Maybe you don't have that extra room that you, you need to, um, you can build an office and stay there and no one will um, walk in on you. So what I can recommend is on your computer, have a, um, have a work-only user, and when you log in with that user, you know that you will uh, just do work here, and when you want to browse Facebook or Twitter or everything else, you can go into your normal account and do that. Um, another thing I want to tell you about is the maker schedule. So um, more or less, this means um, designating a block of time where you know that you will be just doing work or making, making stuff, and you, you know that you won't be interrupted. So find a way for you to assign blocks during, during your day that you know no one will, will come and bother you. Second, uh, my, my second tip is um, not related to remote work, but more with productivity and it's doing more with less. And what I mean by this is um, learn, your, learn your environment. First, think ab um, about your ID, learn what, uh, what the um, keyboard shortcuts are on there because it will make you much more, much more faster. Um, use someone else's code, and I know this is hard for developers because we want to write everything for, from scratch, but use someone else's code, especially if it's well documented. Um, refactor the same code to do the same thing in less lines. And this will, this will also make you productive because in, um, in the long run, it will be much, much more readable. Um, the second idea here is careful planning. So um, in, in, in the spirit of doing more with less, when you're starting a new project, focus on completing um, an MVP first and then think about doing a whole system. Um, also, if, if you're a free freelancer, negotiate with your client. Ask them what is the one thing that you can do now that will solve 80% of their uh, problems. And this is uh, also the, the Pareto principle of the 80-20 um, principle. So, so use that as often as you can. Um, sometimes you, you could find yourself that you're more productive just by dropping features or projects altogether. And this, this is also what, what can happen. It's counterintuitive, but you, you could find that, that it works. And my third tip today is stepping away from work. Um, taking breaks when, when you're stuck. I know you, you all had the, the situation where you said, well, just five more minutes and I will solve this problem. And three hours later, you are, you are still at, at the same step of the problem. So um, take breaks. This is also counterintuitive, but very, very helpful. And the last thing I want to mention is sleeping, not getting enough sleep Will, um, will cause uh, effects in, in the long run. And you, you will see once you get into, into a healthy routine of, of uh, sleeping and working, um, the more productive you, you will find yourself. So um, I've reached the end. Um, as a short summary, today we've talked about the current uh, problem with productivity and the metrics we have for productivity. We have um, talked about the shift that has started by um, knowledge workers. We have talked about remote work. Um, we have looked at some data about remote work. And um, in the end, we've discussed the benefits and drawbacks of remote work. Um, if anyone has any questions, I can take them now or uh, just um, reach out to me on, on Twitter later if you want. So, questions? Yes. Oh, yes. Does it work? I, I can hear. 
Yeah, that's no problem. You started by asking whether therapeutics should be measured in hours and how much it's cost or no. So that's the latest presentation. Several times we referred to that companies saw an increase in productivity by one hour. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, th and that's, that's uh, you wouldn't expect it, right? So, um, I think that the more productive you are, the more you want to, to work, and this is how you would explain the, the increase in, in hours. So, I think they were measuring like actual work and not um, maybe administrative stuff. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's counterintuitive, yeah. Um, yeah? One thing that I, I noticed with remote workers is that it's very difficult to engage uh, with the product, with the business side, mm -hmm. and, uh, and with the team. So if we have, like, let's say, in our company, people in Ukraine, Taipei, Amsterdam, it's very difficult to make them feel part of the team. Mm -hmm. And I think this is actually one of the biggest drawbacks of the remote work and actually one of the things that companies are having issues with right now. Yeah. What is your experience? Well, what, um, what can be changed in order to do that? Yeah. I think if you want to be successful, you have to, as a company, you have to have a remote first strategy. So this means do most of your work on Slack, have everything in writing. So when new people come in or the remote people come in, they can read what has happened and be up to date. So you, you have to always think about your remote, remote, remotes first. Okay, I agree with you. That's that's more on the on the documentation side, uh, but when we're looking more at the soft side, like a lot of companies invest now in company culture, the values, and things like that, that's very difficult to implement at people that are not yeah, actually but, at the office. Yeah, yeah, but but that's also a value. So. Um, when you're writing, you're not just creating documentation, but you're thinking about uh, some colleagues that might come in later than you that don't know what has happened. So it's a courtesy for them to uh, be up to date. You, you, so you, you're thinking in terms of the other people around you. And I think that's a culture, um, culture related thing. Yeah. Okay. You're farther away, so I'm going to oh, try okay. to... Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Hi. Yeah, um, I think there should be a balance, uh, because um, there are, let's say, for, we, do, we do agile way of working, so we need interaction in people, and especially in, let's say, in refinement sessions, planning sessions, if you're remote, it really doesn't work very well. So I think, because if you, if you sell insurances or work in a call center, things you have to do by yourself, I think it works fine. But if you work in a team, and you need this interaction, you must find the balance and not always be remote. So what, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, um, absolutely, you, you need a balance. I know some companies that are um, completely remote and they do bring in people once a year for, for a team building and this way everyone gets to know the, the person they've been working with the whole year. And the, um, another thing I, I would recommend is if you're a programmer, pair program with uh, someone new every week with, uh, with everyone from, from your coworkers, because this is also how, how you, you get to know them. Yeah, okay. Anyone else? Okay, going once, going twice, okay. So you just mentioned some suggestions for working with other programmers remotely. Remote first, use the online tool. So I've had lots of success with that. That seems to work quite well for me. Okay. But not so much with working with the managers, because they like to work in meeting rooms. Do you have any suggestions about how to work with managers when you're remote? Yeah, managers want to, want to see you so they know that you are working, right? Yeah. Um, I think the key here is building trust know that they can trust you. Um, if you want to, want to work remote, um, tell them about the, the benefits 
it would bring them and um, uh, build their trust by saying, well, let's run an experiment. Let's say if I work remote for a week. Let's see what happens. Let's see how it goes. And this way you will, you will be, build trust and they will, um, um, they will trust you to, to work remotely. Okay. Yes, right there. Hi. Hi. I recently worked remotely for a company and we had an issue of getting everyone on alignment in the team and then it ended up with us having more meetings after a while so it ended up like being in an office again. So I was wondering what other kinds of uh, strategies have you encountered so far to like implement this of having a team on the same page about something apart from using Slack? Um, so by by alignment, do you mean um, setting up an hour for everyone to be present, or alignment in terms of what you have to do and tasks and alignment towards the approach to a certain problem or devising a solution and stuff like that? Yeah. Because like not all problems can be solved by okay. Now you work and code for eight hours. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that that's a problem not only with remote workers. I think it, it's common in a team. Um, I don't know what to tell you except uh, talk, communicate, uh, say why, why you like your solution, uh, what it brings to the table, and the other person um, say what, what they like about their solution and what their solution brings at, at the end, maybe, I don't know, have a vote or something or have a, a, a tiebreaker. I don't know. Okay. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Okay, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your conference. <laughs>